What's going on, Jello family? Welcome to the Angelo Carlos podcast. Today's video is about the three biggest lessons I've learned at UCLA Anderson. As you guys know, I'm UCLA Anderson business school student, and I have had experience working at Google as a program manager, as well as at Meta and Airbnb. So I've learned so much at these companies, but today I want to focus on UCLA Anderson. And UCLA, for those of you who are curious, is, was voted the number one public school in the world. Very fortunate to have been able to actually get into the school. It's always kind of like a, a dream to get in UCLA. I was very happy to get in, go there. However, one thing I've always learned is that I've learned so much from being around so many smart people. So everything I'm gonna share with you now is what I've just learned throughout these, these years at UCLA. So the first thing I've learned at UCLA is that your network is gonna be more important than anything you ever learned in class, right? You need to realize, right? Class, amazing, right? You learn so much stuff from your professors, I've had professors who worked kind of in the entertainment industry, the investment banking, private equity industry, as well as tech um, kind of companies like Netflix. And you're around so many smart people, right? And I've also had professors who are PhDs from, who kind of worked in academia most of their life, right? A lot of what people teach you in class, right? A lot of it's from a textbook, it's theory. And you kind of get in the sense of like thinking that the world everything you know in the world is going to be exactly what you learn in textbook. In reality, it's not, right? At UCLA, at Google, um, I, I've learned it's just that your network is far more important than anything you'll ever learn in class, right? Everything you're taught in the textbook, say like theory on math, theory on investments, on all these things, right? They're great. However, they do not apply to the real world. The reason being is that the people you meet in class they will be your friends throughout life. They will be the ones kind of progressing in corporate America, progressing in uh, their jobs or whatever it may be. And those relationships you have, they'll go far beyond the class, right? For me, I've because I've become close friends with so many of my classmates at UCLA, I've had one friend, he was directing a Netflix uh, series called The Brother's Son. Because he was directing Netflix series, he asked me to be an, an, an actor or a, an extra, actually, on the one of the, the episode side. I was on that. I've had friends who got referrals to companies like Salesforce, and Amazon, Google, Intuit, whatever it may be, because of their connections within the class, right? And a lot of times, we are taught amazing things in class, but we realize that this life we live, this world we live in, it's all about networking, right? So you can get the best grades in class, but if you're not close with it, if you don't establish and build relationships with people, it's impossible for, it's really, it's gonna be really hard for you to get your dream job out of college, to um, find a co-founder for your company, to create content like what I'm doing, right? Where a lot of my friends are from UCLA are the people who are actually going on my podcast and talking about their experience, right? So this to say is that your network is going to be more important than anything you'll ever learn in the classroom okay and the way you establish a network it's it's about relationships right so when i want to meet someone when i want to get close with someone when i get fascinated by what someone has done in their career in their life i try to establish a relationship so how do you do this right you're probably an undergrad right now you're probably in grad school you're probably um, community college, you're probably in the career life right now. You're probably um, just wherever you are in life, you're going to realize that networking will be the most uh, important asset for you guys to to become, um, to just kind of get where you want to in life, right? That's not to say don't work on your technical skills, don't work on your business skills, don't work on that. You still need to work on those things, but networking is going to be an extremely important aspect of what you're going to be doing with your life and your career. So in order for you to network, in order for you to say you're in class right now, just say hi, right? For me, at UCLA, a lot of my classmates, extremely smart, career-oriented, right? They've done great things with their life, their career. So what I do is I say hi to that person, right? I say hi to everyone, right? If you're in a classroom with 30 people, don't be afraid to say hi. You need to realize most people are extremely shy. So if they're extremely shy, you coming up to them is just like a huge relief on them, right? For me, I see myself as someone who's a very extroverted, extra very social, but 99% of times, I'm so scared to talk to someone, right? That may come to shock to you for people who are watching my content right now, people have known me for a while now, is that you may think, oh man, Angelo, super social guy, 
always talking to people, always saying hi, always saying hi to people by their name. Uh, he's not shy at all. He's not afraid to go up to anyone. That is what we all say, Cap. The reason it's Cap is because I still feel the same scaredness. I still feel the same anxiety. I still feel the same fear that you all will fear. The difference between me and you, or those of you who are maybe shy, or or more like more likely me who the past me, is that I acknowledge that fear, I acknowledge that anxiety, and I just do it. I just go for it, right? Because I know at the end of the day, I'm not gonna die from saying hi to someone at class. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like my my grades are gonna plummet just because I said hi to someone, right? It's just this weird evolutionary thing we all have inside of us where I think when we're around new people, we get scared, right? And that's completely normal. I want you guys to realize that we all feel this. Even the most social person, if you guys think I'm extremely social, I get scared too. And I hope this video helps you kind of realize that we all get scared. We all have fears, right? But that should not stop us from building our network, from realizing that everything we've learned in class is great, but our networks will set us apart. I'll give you guys a story about how I um, just basically met everyone in my class and did not um, allow my fear of networking, of saying hi to people to, to kind of um, overtake me. So imagine UCLA. UCLA is a beautiful campus, right? The business school, gorgeous, right? There's one thing you'll realize is that when you work or you go to school at a large campus, the places that have the most donors for that specific school, usually it's a lot nicer. So the reason I say that is because this is what I've noticed. It could be different from everywhere else. Don't get me wrong. Um, like UCLA, Anderson, business school, a lot of donors who are very successful in the business realm. They donate a lot of money to the university because they just love the university. Maybe a tax write-off. It may be something that they just have fond memories. So they donate a lot to the university. And essentially what happens is that because they donate so much, the school is very well kept together. They build new buildings in their name and it's all around gorgeous. So UCLA is extremely gorgeous, right? It's like this, imagine this kind of like old school, like Victorian feel, uh, like it looks like Harvard, but on the West Coast. So you go into UCLA, beautiful campus, UCLA Anderson, you go upstairs and the classrooms are like this giant fishbowl, right? It's like a big kind of auditorium. And you have around 30 to 40 people every class. They try to keep it small and because they want it to seem like a business uh, class. They want it to seem like you're working with other leaders. And everyone has like their name tags on the company they work at um, or just their names um, and the class they're in, right? So you basically get pretty close with everyone because if you're in an auditorium with 300 people, it's kind of hard to say hi to everyone, but at, in business school, you have like 20, 30 people, 40 people in the class. So what I do is before every class, I try and get there 20 minutes early, right? And as people trickle in, I go up to them and say hi, right? And that is an extremely nervous thing for me. It's extremely scary for me. So don't think just because you get scared, I don't get scared, I get scared all the time. Like we're all afraid of fear. Like we all we all have that same fear of anxiety of coming up to people. So I get really scared and I kind of overcome that fear by just doing it. I'll go up to that person who came into class and say, Jeff, what's going on, buddy? Nice to meet you. I'm Angelo. Uh, where are you from? I'll just say hi. I'll try to remember the name. And then what I do is I shake their hand, look them in the eye, and I just ask about themselves. So like quick one, two minute conversation at most. Sometimes even 10 second conversation. I just want to say hi. I just want them to know that I acknowledge them. I see them. I appreciate them coming to class and I want to just introduce myself, right? So I do that to everyone who comes in the classroom. And by doing this, like people are kind of in shock because like, wow, someone's actually talking to me, right? We all kind of feel like this love. Like, unless you're like a celebrity, you probably have thousands of people coming up to you every day just trying to talk to you but for most people we don't have that especially if you're just like a normal person like myself you just say hi and then you're like wow anytime someone comes up to you you, just, you feel great right so what i do is like i always just say hi to someone whoever just walks in the classroom shake their hand um let them know that hey i mean it's always good to meet you i'm very excited to learn more about you figure out who you are as a person and then that's kind of how i establish a poor with the relationship so you just do that whenever you want go into class right if you're an undergrad you have a discussion go to your discussion say hi to everyone don't be afraid that people are going to think you're the weird person. People think I'm weird all the time. I just don't care. 
because this is my life. This is my career. This is who I'm trying to become. If you think I'm weird, there's no way it affects me whatsoever. Like, it kind of hurts, of course, because you're a normal human being. You want everyone to like you. I still feel that pain. I still feel that 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 anxiety of people not liking me. But I just go past it, right? Because you could think I'm weird and that shouldn't stop me from meeting my future business partner for meeting someone who's going to help me with our career who's someone who i can help with their career and their dreams their goals that fear anxiety of people not seeing you as a cool person that should never stop you from achieving your dreams your goals because life is full of rejection right there's like a statistic where most people who try to raise venture capital funding for their company they'll get rejected more and more and more and more times before they actually get a yes right so if you kind of go past this anxiety this fear of being seen as weird of someone who thinks you're not a cool person because you're saying hi then you can achieve anything you want in your life right there's this i think this stigma like where it's cool to be like nah i don't need you guys no i'm too cool to talk to anyone Yes, that is cool, like in college and undergrad and high school, right? However, when it comes to the real world, where we're all going to eventually get into the real world, you need to eradicate that thought from you because at the end of the day, I've learned this at Google is that people want to work with people they enjoy being around, people want to work with people who are personable, who care about them. And if you have this mindset mentality as I always need to be cool, then you're going to have a tough time networking attracting investors finding business partners collaborating with other creators collaborating with anyone in your career because you have this mindset of i always need to be cool or you allow that fear and anxiety of meeting new people to take over your life don't allow that to happen because jello family i believe in you please 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 don't let this fear anxiety stop you from achieving your control your goals your dreams whatever it may be okay so that's one thing i've learned in class is that your network is more important than anything you ever learn in school in class focus on your network meet people don't be afraid to say hi they're just as scared to meet you so if you guys realize you're both scared then things get a little easier a little, just a little bit easier all right number two you can do anything you set your mind to let me repeat that again for those of you who did not hear it you can do anything you set your mind to okay and this is not some raw raw where you're like yeah like you could do yourself anything you set your mind to you could do it you could do it right yes you need that mindset of where you are unstoppable you can do anything you set your mind to but i want you guys also to put in the work so that way when you say these words to yourself you actually believe it for me the reason i believe this is because during my time at ucla i'm still at ucla got a job at google hardest place in the world to get a job because they pay so well they are full of smartest people in the world and you will learn so much about yourself during that interview process so hard i got to ucla number one public school in the entire world it's really hard to get into the school everyone's applying you're with a whole bunch of people who are the same personality as you because they believe in themselves because they work so hard to get there right so by doing all these extremely hard things with my life i started believing I can do anything I set my mind to. The way that works too is that whatever your career is, whatever your goals, your dreams are, you can do that. Just know that you have to put the work in to believe that you can do that, okay? And people will always doubt you. There will be people in the comment section talking trash about you. There will be your friends, your family who don't believe in your goals, who don't believe in your dreams because... It seems far-fetched. It seems scary to them. It seems that they could achieve their dreams. So let me just tell people, I they can't achieve their dreams. I've been making to that too as well, where I just didn't believe myself as a dark place in my life. I just tell people they can't do it because I didn't achieve what I wanted to do, right? But that is not true. You can do anything you set your mind to. That is one thing at UCLA Anderson, they always taught us. Whatever goal, whatever dream you have in this world and in this life, if you put the work in, you will be successful. You will achieve that goal. You will become who you want to become because you've done everything in your power to achieve that. It's more so, it's never going to be if, it's more so when. When you will achieve that goal. When you will achieve whatever you're trying to achieve in this world. 
because you put the work in and you allow time to compound. There's this thing Alex Ramosi always says, pay down the ignorance debt. The faster you start whatever you're trying to achieve in life, the faster you press play. That's for me because I want to grow this YouTube channel. I want it to be a million, two million, five million, 10, 20 million subscribers. I want to get a Mr. Beast level to give and help so many people. If you set your mind to achieving something, you will achieve that. Just pay down that ignorance debt. Ignorance debt is basically all the stuff, all the bad stuff you have to go through in order to achieve your goal. Like all the, the failures, all the the hate comments towards you because you don't like your content, all the, um, the, the, the mind and mental games you play on yourself because you don't see the end of the tunnel because it's just been a hard day for business. It's been hard to keep posting. You don't believe in yourself. You don't feel good that day, right? You need to pay down the ignorance debt and you need to realize anything you set your mind to in this world, you can achieve. I don't want you guys ever to feel that just because you don't feel good that day, just because you don't feel like you can achieve that that day, just because you had a failure, a setback, those are all supposed to be there. And when you have that in your mind, that this is supposed to be there, this is supposed to be a part of that journey to achieve and become the best version of myself to give to the world, to become useful to society, you know that you can get through anything, okay? So at UCLA, they always taught us you can do anything you set your mind to, right? You go to these amazing schools because you have dreams, you wanna be around like-minded people, right? I've had friends who came in from a nonprofit background into UCLA because they want to get into investment banking. They put so much work in when it came to applying to jobs, when it came to learning how to interview for these jobs, when it came to taking everything they've learned in class into the actual interviews, right? I know earlier I said your network is more important, but also there are some things you'll learn in finance and business school that you will take to your investment banking interview if that's the route you go, that you will take to your business school interviews for, for any jobs that are more business and finance related, right? So anything you do, you could set your mind to it. I've had friends who have worked in nonprofit industries and they get a job at Goldman Sachs, get a job in um, like Bank of America as an investment maker. I've had friends who were basically working in roles that they didn't want to and get jobs at Google, get jobs at Meta. And they were able to achieve that because they believed in themselves. They have had friends who have learned to start a company because they didn't want to work for anyone in their entire life. They wanted to work for themselves. They wanted to build a company, sell through acquisition, and they were able to do so. I've had friends who joined a startup and realized that they wanted to build a product. They wanted to um, go through initial public offerings so that way they can feel as if like, they gave back everything they had to a company through all the hard work of a startup and then reap the fruits of their labor through um, initial public offering, right? So it is possible you can do anything you set your mind to. Don't ever let your fear of failure do that. Like may stop you from becoming what you want to in this world, in this life, right? For me, my dream, I've always wanted to make content on YouTube to help people become their best version of themselves because I knew getting a job at Google, getting into UCLA is extremely hard. I come from a first generation family. I don't come from money. I come from everything I had to earn, everything I had to just basically get for myself because I really wanted to give back to the world. I had to earn everything. And the fact that I was able to go through all these trials and tribulations to achieve that has made me a better person. So whether you come from wealth, whether you come from nothing, whether you come from just normal life or normal means, like you can achieve anything you set your mind to, just put in the work. For me, UCLA seemed like such a far-fetched thing, right? But I applied, I did well on my tests, I did well on my interviews, and I got it, right? And I don't come from an exceptional background. I'm just a normal human being. I'm just a normal person. So whatever goal you have, set your mind to it. Do anything you can, whether it be making a lot of money, whether it be growing your, your social media, whether it be helping taking care of your family, you can do anything you set your mind to. Set that goal, do the hard work associated with that goal. If that anything you want in this world, you can achieve. It's going to always not be if, it's more so when, when you achieve that. And Jello family, set your mind to something and achieve that goal. I believe in you, okay? That was the, the third lesson I learned from, from UCLA. That was the second lesson I learned from UCLA. Apologies. Number three 
is to drum roll please this is a finance lesson pay off all your debt the reason i say this is because there are so many times in life where we just go about life without focusing on our finances we think we can take out a loan from a bank go to school and just not worry about it we think that we can just take a loan for a car take a loan for a house pay those monthly payments and not worry about it i'm here to tell you that debt needs to be paid off the reason being is that a lot of times we tend to operate in a way where that we take the money out and think it's just going to be there and we won't have to worry about it but that's wrong i'm a big proprietor of paying off your student loans pay off all your debt because you can operate and function in your most holistic way what does that mean i came into undergrad grad school with about three hundred thousand dollars in debt that accumulated from my tuition from school from my tuition from undergrad as well as from a car i had bought because i wanted to buy a car and i paid that off in about two or three years because of how hard i worked and i realized that just because you can make a monthly payment on something doesn't mean you should have it there doesn't mean that you should just pay the monthly payment and not worry about it because the way you need to realize the world works is that those that interest you're getting from that debt will accumulate over time and it will really destroy you financially okay so i'm telling you this message early whether you're early in your career whether you are just getting out of uh your uh school whether you're in school right now and you just need to hear this whether you have had debt for several years it just hasn't gone away pay off all your debt pay off all your debt the way i did this is i worked three jobs i know it's not possible for a lot of people to work three jobs but i just wanted it so bad i just wanted to be able to sleep at night not worrying about money having to work like ruin the way i think ruin the way i create because when you worry about money, you can't give your most best authentic self to the world. It's extremely stressful, right? For me, my monthly payments are crazy. I think undergrad was around six, seven hundred a month. The grad school a thousand bucks a month, and then another like five, six hundred bucks a month for the car, right? So it's like what 2500 just in debt every month, and it's hard to sleep at night knowing that you still have to pay rent, pay mortgage, whatever it may be for you. So pay off all your debt. Don't let that accumulate over time. Because the way it works is that you may have like a loan for like 72 months. You may have a loan for 20, 30 years. That debt just accumulates over time. And if you ever look at your payments for your Chase payments, for your student loan payments, you make minimum payments, you just basically pay off interest. Like say you have a $500 payment, you make that $500 payment every month, 300 bucks goes to interest, 200 bucks goes to the principal. And then you start realizing, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna pay this off. For me, I made it my mission to always pay off my debt. I wasn't always like this until I started looking at the numbers behind everything, behind how grad school works, behind how undergrad works, right? And the way you do this, it's gonna be hard, but it's simple okay you do need to live below your means right i was paying around ten thousand dollars a month in debt it says like i would just put ten thousand dollars a month every paycheck towards towards pay off debt towards pay off loads and by making such huge payments you start paying down the principal amount so much faster okay so the way I do this is that I was a subscriber to Dave Ramsey and I know Dave Ramsey is a huge financial kind of person on YouTube and uh, he's very hard on you, very tough on you in a sense like where he'll have callers, he's very tough on them, like why would you make that financial decision? But he's coming from a place of like love and a place of pain because he's been broke before. I have been broke before too. I've been there with zero dollars in your account and you don't know how you're going to pay rent. You don't know how you're going to pay your... Um, your car you don't know how you pay your rent you don't know how you get groceries i've been there 
most terrifying feeling in the world. And I don't want you guys to kind of feel that pain. That's why I tell you guys to pay off your debt. So the way I pay off my debt was, I've done videos about this before, I make more videos again, because I think it's so important. I used the debt snowball effect. The debt snowball effect is what I learned Dave, Dave Ramsey. And that's essentially, you start with your lowest debt first, and you pay that off, right? So say you have a loan from undergrad, let's make it easy. Loan from undergrad is $10,000, loan for your car is $20,000, the loan from grad school is $30,000, right? So the way you pay it off is that you pay off the lowest debt first, which is undergrad. So even though the interest rate may be higher for a, a different ones, maybe it's the highest for undergrad, doesn't care, we don't care. We just look at the principal amount. The principal is $10,000, we'll pay off undergrad first, right? So everything you do, whatever paycheck you have, put most of it towards your debt for undergrad, it says $10,000. And then once we pay off that loan, we're gonna tack the next biggest loan, which is our car payment, or um, which is twenty thousand dollars. So we'll start paying everything for that twenty thousand dollar loan for that car payment, okay? And then after we pay off that loan, we will pay off the loan for the grad school, which is thirty thousand dollars, right? And the way you do that is that I allocate all my resources, or my resources right was money at the time, so towards that loan. So every paycheck I have, say, just say it was like, say I got ten thousand dollars every month, right? Whatever I, I need for my, my rent, for my insurance, for whatever it may be, I put that aside. So it takes 5,000 bucks. I will put that aside for uh, whatever it may be. That's all put aside. And then that remaining 5,000 I have for for uh, for debt, I use that to just pay off the underground loan. So pay off underground, right? And this would take some time, right? It'd take two or three years, right? You need to live like extremely frugally, which is unfortunate. But like anything that's worth it in life, if you come out the other side successful because you put so much hard work towards it, it's all going to be worth it, right? So pay off all your debt, right? The debt snowball effect is what I use. If you guys have questions about that, just comment down below. Um, and I will like try and help out with that with regards to like how I did it. I'll make more videos about that too. And then I plan on starting like, a discord where I can just have people ask questions about finances, personal finance. And just to get help people like about with their career and their life so that's going to be started soon too but that being said pay off all your debt pay it all off right and once you pay off all your debt do not go back into debt because you've already won your financial freedom you've won peace of mind and the biggest mistake most people do is that once they're out of debt they're just so used to chaos of always being stressed to pay off everything they, they try to go back into debt. They'll buy a new car. They'll buy a new house. They'll go back to school. And then they'll like go into more debt. More loads, more loads, more loads, right? Because at the end of the day, like if you want peace of mind, make sure there's no debt associated with your name. So that way you can sleep at night, right? Um, a lot of some people like who who subscribe to debt, they, 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 they're they more so like, they like having debt because they have to generate more income, more money, right? For me, I understand myself personally and I, I don't want any debt on my name. I just want everything that I have in this world to be just paid off so that way I can sleep well, right? Some people, they don't care. They don't mind because they see that debt as an asset, right? So just understand who you are as a person and then go with that form of thought. For me, I understand who I am as a person. I don't want any debt. I don't want any um, finances that are negative associated with my name because it's just, uh, it stresses me out. It stresses me out. I, I don't come from from uh, from uh, like an affluent like uh, upbringing. So for me, having no debt, being able to sleep at night and just uh, living a life where I can just be debt free and then talk about finances, talk about helping people, that that makes me happy, okay? So pay off all your debt, okay? So with that being said, Jello family, that are, those are the three biggest like business lessons I've learned at UCLA was that your network is more important than anything you learn in class. You can do anything you set your mind to, whether it be business and in life. And then number three is just pay off all your debt, right? These three lessons, it took a lot to learn and I hope you guys learned it from my YouTube video, right? Because everything I gave you in this channel is just meant to help you to get back to the world that's been so good to me, that has seen me through these ups and downs and has allowed me to develop as a human being, as a person, and just give back, give, give back. It, it makes me so happy that you guys are watching this content. It's helping you. People are messaging me. Thank you so much. Very informative. And uh, I hope, I, I just hope I'm just helping you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk, to help you guys. It means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're 200 subscribers now. Let's go. 200. That's crazy to me. So I'm just so happy and blessed. 
So if I have, please like, comment, and subscribe. Take a look at my links down below. There's some affiliate links, uh, all the equipment I used to record this, as well as I uh, will have a Discord where I just kind of share my knowledge, answer any questions on personal finance, career, whatever it may be. That'll be down below as well. And then I have my Instagram. Check a look at my Instagram below, Angelo Carlos, uh, as well as my other channel on YouTube, Angelo Carlos. That's more so tech and uh, Tesla stuff. So take a look at that channel as well below. Uh, we're going to get this... Uh, Road to monetization. That's the goal for this channel. Road to monetization. So I'm excited. There are 200 subs. We're going to get those watch hours up. But please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching the whole video. If you're still here, you're the best. I really appreciate you, Jello fam. Love you guys. Peace.